An avid and proven passion for research shows admissions committees you're intellectually inquisitive and committed to advancing medicine, qualities all admissions committees are looking for. Dr. Jubal, MedSchoolInsiders.com. This is the third video in our new extracurricular series where we dive deep into extracurriculars to help you decide which ones are right for you. Let us know which extracurricular you'd like to learn about next in the comments below. Whether you're applying to medical school or residency, research experience will play a key role in your acceptance. As schools look more and more to soft components to distinguish applicants, research has become a more sought-after experience. So what does it entail, what are the benefits and drawbacks, and how do you make the most of extracurricular research? First, let's cover what types of research you can pursue. There are two main types of research. Knowing the difference and your preference will help you find the position that's right for you. Basic or bench research is performed in a laboratory and evaluates scientific questions from a cellular, molecular, and physiological level. This often consists of performing experiments on cells, tissues, and animals, which means achieving consequential results is labor-intensive and time-consuming. However, it provides valuable insight into how research works at its foundational level, and basic research is considered more impressive to admissions committees. Clinical research refers to working with patients or patient data to answer a clinical question relevant to the current practice of medicine. This research is more flexible and can often be completed with a computer, such as when performing a chart review, which makes it easier to publish quickly. However, clinical research experience is generally not considered as substantial as basic research. To find a research position, you need to have both an interest in the topics the lab is exploring, as well as basic but necessary experience. Searching for a mentor is usually the most difficult part of the process, but most universities have a list of research labs you can find online. Look for labs performing research you're interested in. Choose a principal investigator you want to work with and email them directly. A PI is essentially the leader of the lab and your future boss. Your school may have a program in place where performing research earns you class credit. If so, your college may have a set approach for contacting PIs who are a part of that program. This is an ideal option, as it means the PI will have plenty of experience working with pre-meds in their lab. You can also reach out to your personal Personal contacts. Do you have a friend who enjoyed their experience in a certain lab? Ask their advice and check if you can apply to the same one. If you've been particularly impressed by a professor, see if they have a research lab and reach out to them. Look for someone who is supportive of pre-med students. Be sure to ask peers and upper classmates what they've heard about the PI and if they've worked with them before. If the lab is not supportive of pre-meds, you will not have a rewarding experience. You may have to email several PIs before finding a position. Always research the lab ahead of time so that you can express genuine enthusiasm about the work they're doing. Your interest will not go unnoticed. Be persistent. Once you do make contact, ask questions about the role so that you know whether or not it's something you're really interested in and can fully commit to. Some basic science labs will prefer that you have experience with certain techniques, from the basics such as pipetting and titration to more complex ones like ELISA or PCR. Your pre-med prerequisite lab coursework will generally be sufficient to introduce you to the basic techniques and your PI or other research team can build upon the basics to teach you more advanced techniques. We have full guides on MedSchoolInsiders.com that outline how to find an undergraduate research position and how to gain publications, links in the description. Next, let's talk about the benefits and drawbacks of extracurricular research, beginning with the good. First, working as a research assistant grants you valuable experience. It teaches you how to navigate the research space, set your own agenda, communicate with mentors, and be a helpful member of the team. These are skills that will help you immeasurably throughout your medical education and future career, particularly during your clinical clerkships. Research skills are also extremely translatable. If you love what you did in undergrad, you can hit the ground running when you get to medical school and secure solid publications. Even if you change the kind of research you're doing, you can still apply the same knowledge and skills. Next, extracurricular research increases your chances of getting into medical school and residency. Undergraduate research is a major component of medical school applications, and strong research can work wonders for a student's competitiveness. Getting actively involved in research shows admissions committees you're intellectually curious and interested in learning as much as possible. Plus, unlike other components of your application, the publications and abstracts you earn in undergrad can and should still be included in your residency applications. Next, extracurricular research is a chance to gain publications. While not necessary, a publication can be a huge benefit to your application, as publications are a quantifiable metric of your success as an undergraduate. 
graduate. If publishing is a priority for you, look for a lab that publishes frequently. Find a PI with a proven track record of working with undergraduates and helping them get published. Express your overall goals to your PI from the beginning. Make it clear that, if possible, you would like to be published in some capacity. Based on their answer, form a plan moving forward. Don't bring it up again until you have firmly secured their confidence and trust. In addition to publications, you may have the chance to present your work at events and local or national conferences, which are excellent opportunities to practice your presentation skills and network. There are many benefits to extracurricular research, but there are also some drawbacks. First, experience is often required, and the kind of experience will depend on the position. Most labs are looking for basic experience, such as a few biology and chemistry labs that are prerequisites for medical school. If you have taken several prerequisites in biology, it's likely you already know your way around the lab, so you may be able to find a position. Other labs will give you an entry position, starting you off with basic PCR technique and cell culture. Not much will be expected of you, and you'll mostly answer to the PhD students. It all depends on the lab, but do not expect you will be able to get a research position without lab experience. Next, research opportunities are competitive. The availability of research opportunities depends on where you live, the institution you're a part of, how many pre-meds are vying for the spots, and the reputation of the lab. If you're from a large school with a notable research program, you'll be competing with several people for spots. If you get a spot, you might be part of a larger team and have to compete for the attention of the principal investigator. Ideally, the PI will be your primary mentor, so having to compete for their attention could hinder your experience. On the other hand, if you're from a small school, there may only be a handful of labs available, which means several students vying for very few spots. Next, finding a strong mentor can be difficult. Unfortunately, just because a researcher is prolific with publishing papers doesn't mean they'll be a good mentor. At the undergrad level, a solid mentor is more important than publishing papers. Not only are you developing skills vital to succeeding in medical school, residency, and beyond, you also need a strong letter of recommendation. Admissions committees will notice a strong letter from a PI. Ask older students about their experiences in any labs you are considering to find out if the PI is supportive of pre-meds. Another drawback is that research, especially basic science research, can be very repetitive. Expect plenty of cell cultures, PCRs, iterative experiments, and plenty of the same tasks over and over again. If you're stuck with a PI who does not get you involved, you may only develop a small skill set. If they restrict you to one thing and one thing only, it's going to be a dull, unrewarding, and deeply repetitive experience. Lastly, research is filled with uncertainty. You may get paid, you may get a paper, or you may get neither. Your experiments may not work out. The entire project might be scrapped. There's also no guarantee you'll have many opportunities to work with the PI one-on-one, -on -one, which could compromise the strength of a letter of recommendation. It's possible you'll get a great paper out of the experience and become an author, or you may only acquire lots of hours, experience, and hopefully a strong letter of recommendation nothing is guaranteed in research. With all of that uncertainty, how do you get the most out of extracurricular research? Here are five tips. First, choose a research experience you will enjoy. Most options will be basic science research, which means your experience will likely be labor intensive and time consuming. That's why it's so important to choose something you're genuinely interested in. For me, that was a lab focusing on IBD since I had recently been diagnosed with Crohn's colitis. If you choose a research experience on a whim or just to get a publication, the quality of your output will suffer, and your lack of passion will be noticed not only by your PI, but also by your interviewer when it comes time to speak about it. The second tip is to put in the work. Attention to detail and strong work ethic are both vital in research, and these will both be tested, as the work is repetitive, tedious, and can take a long time to produce results. But the more you commit to the process, the more you will be rewarded. Be proactive. Seek out opportunities to expand your role and take on more responsibility. This passion and dedication could result in a strong letter of recommendation or even a publication. Take time to determine what type of research is the best fit for you and look for a lab that has the type of mentor you'd like to work with. After that, commit. It doesn't look good to jump around from one lab to the next and it will be harder for you to build strong relationships if you don't give them time to form. Thirdly, prioritize PIs who are interested in acting as mentors to pre-meds. Not all researchers are strong mentors, so look for a lab with a PI who is inclusive, friendly, and wants to help guide your journey. Consider the following questions. 
How quickly do they respond to emails? If you've met in person, how approachable are they? Have they worked with many pre-meds before, and have they helped those pre-meds secure publications? Speak to older students who have been a part of the lab. If it's not a good environment for other students, it won't be a good environment for you. Once you're a part of the lab, you'll learn very quickly if the PI will be a strong mentor to you. One of the best ways to find out is when an experiment fails. Do they dwell on it, or do they move on and guide you to the next step? Fourth, building relationships is almost more important than the experiments themselves. Your relationship with your PI is the main relationship you're cultivating. The stronger your relationship, the more likely they'll be able to write you a strong letter of recommendation. Now, if it's a 30-person lab, you may not have much direct interaction with the PI. In these cases, most of your one-on-one -on -one time may be spent with the postdoc. This isn't a bad thing, but you still want to make a connection with the PI and ask if they can meet with you once a week, bi-weekly, or at the very least, once a month. Be diligent about securing time with the PI. The next tip is to build trust and take initiative, as this is how you will gain more responsibility. Always be helpful. If a PhD student has an appointment, but they need to run an experiment, offer to run it for them. Help the people who are mentoring you. Don't say yes to everything, but say yes to what you can. Being useful is the ultimate way to build these relationships and make connections. Take initiative rather than wait around to be told what to do. Show that you're needed there. If you prove to everyone in the lab you're useful and a good addition to the team, everything will work out with your relationships and you'll be well regarded, not only by your PI, but by everyone you work with. It's very common for applicants to think the work and activity section isn't as important as the other sections of their medical school application. However, this could not be further from the truth. The experiences section is one of the first places admissions committees look. They use it to gauge who you are, what motivates you, and whether or not you will make meaningful contributions to the student body. As traditional hard metrics become less heavily weighted, other soft components, particularly research, are now front and center in determining a candidate's competitiveness. If you find yourself wondering where to begin or not making much headway on your current research projects, our research course is for you. We've distilled how to become a research superstar into a stepwise and repeatable process. These are the tactics and lessons we've learned from earning more than 60 research items each. No, you didn't hear that wrong. The team behind the research course, including yours truly, each have more than 60 publications, abstracts, and presentations to our names, which has consistently wowed admissions committees. Find a link to the ultimate pre-med and medical student research course in the description to learn more. For the next 30 days, use coupon code EXSERIES20 for 20% off the course. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out our other extracurricular guides on becoming an EMT and medical scribing. Much love, and I'll see you all there.